Now, with home inspectors, the one issue you guys have got to worry about is there are so many what we call add-ons to a home inspection. All right. There can be things that get added on. Lead-based paint. All right. Termites. And you can't call them termites anymore. They're now termite Americans. That's the actual, no. We actually have to use wood destroying insects. You will see this in almost all your reports, WDIs. Got to be certified to call them termites. And that's why I'm telling you here, your home inspector may be uh, termite certified or they may not. It's up to that term, uh, person. Then you've got radon and mold. You got septic tank people, if it's a FHA loan. So when you meet up or uh, try to start working with a home inspector, you might want to ask them if they have any of these other add-on certificates because it may dictate to you which home inspector you use. If you've got a home inspector that is a licensed home inspector, but let's say he's not termite certified and your buyer says, well, I want a termite inspection. That's gonna kind of eliminate that particular guy to be the home inspector for that property because he doesn't have the capability to do all of the inspections that are required. So it's not, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's their preference, but you would need to know so that you could get an inspection and go, hey, I want you to do the termites. And he's like, uh, I can't do that. Damn, should have gone with another guy. All right. So remember to ask that when you start meeting these people. Over on the next page is counseling. Counseling, there are Fundamentally, you guys should be learning how to counsel your client. It is a license required activity. There are two types of counselors that we deal with. The first counselor, there's a specific guy named John Fox here in the city. You go and see him. And if you've got a commercial client that wants to open like a pizza parlor, he will tell you what zoning you need, how many parking spots, how big the building has to be, the layout, and then he will give you all of the bullet points and you go broker the property, all right? Then the other type of counseling, which you guys better get really good at, is learning to counsel your own client so that you can get to the end of this rainbow much quicker. Now, I know that we're here to help people and we all love to look at houses and that's why I'm in this business. That's all fine and dandy, but just between you and me, let's, let's be honest, we also wanna make money. And the only way to make a lot of money is to do a bunch of clients and you need to get from the beginning to the end as quick as you can, yet still give good customer service, still follow our ethic rules and, and serve the client correctly. But that doesn't mean you have to spend 12 days looking at properties. So part of your counseling should be when they say, hey, I want a big house. All right, what do you mean? Here's one of the things that you'll find that's funny as hell to me. People will call me because they know they're in the business and they'll go, look, Raymond, I want you to find my house and I know you're busy. so." You know, when you get a minute, just look for a three bedroom home for us, okay? Dude, there are 44,000 three bedroom homes. Now's your chance to tell me everything you want so that if I look for a three bedroom home, two bath, 1,500 square feet, built in 1990 on one acre with a pole barn and a pool, there may be two of those. That is going to cut our time drastically down from looking at 44,000 homes to two, all right? So that counseling should be acquired by you. We actually teach a, a professional development course called Client Counseling One and Two to help you learn to listen to your client, 
to question them. So when they go, oh, I want a big house, you need to ask, is that square footage? Is that yard? Is that number of cars in the garage? What do you mean by big house? So that when I go search the MLS, I can find what you want way quicker and spend a little less time. The next topic is education. What I'm currently doing right now requires a license. I actually have a separate educator's license. Actually, I have two other educator's licenses. I've got a pre-licensing course educator to teach what I'm literally teaching now. And I've got a continuing ed, which we will talk about all about educator's license that allows me to teach continuing ed for already licensed people okay now there are a bunch of other people we haven't even talked about there's title work people there's surveyors there's attorneys that specialize in real estate so all of these people that we just covered are included in this conveyance of real estate that assumed or consumed 14 trillion dollars now we as the broker are often seen as the linchpin or the center of this community because we tend to be the most visible so just about every one of these people that i talked about are going to come to you and want to partner with you except the appraiser he's the only one but the property manager, the home inspector, the title company, they all come into my office virtually every day and they want you to remember who they are so that when something happens and your client needs a home inspector, you go, oh, let's call home services or let's call rent house inspection. And they bring you little goodies and uh, we're not in the office or I could show you the candy or the breath mints or any of that. and you can see that they come in and want to partner with you. I guess we're going on a tour of Jamon's house. I hope everybody knows he's walking around like that. Like, uh, sorry, like I got to move spots. <laughs> Do not go into the bathroom. Did you guys see the video on YouTube or it was on Facebook of the lady? They were having a conference call and she was on her cell phone and apparently slipped her mind and went to the bathroom she actually carried the phone into the bathroom and you hear people on debbie 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 stop and she's in the bathroom and on the phone and you see it i would imagine it would be quite embarrassing later when you met up with those people so if you decide to go mobile with your camera, cool. Just remember there may be other people in your house and they may not be ready for that camera. All right. So we're going to talk about different types of real property. There's residential, commercial, industrial. <clears throat> I'm going to put agricultural up here. Um, all of these, let's see if I can do this. Nope, I guess I can't do that. There. <clears throat> and then there is special use. Special use would be properties. So agricultural, we get farmland. Residential, that's buildings used to be lived in. Commercial, commercial here, we only mean retail an office because industrial they split out separately because of the environmental uses and then special use is things we might find only one or two of cemeteries government buildings golf courses those could be defined as a special use property we're going to mainly concentrate on the selling and the buying which is what I talked about, is that conveyance portion that we discussed. <clears throat> We're going to talk a little bit about investing. <clears throat> Sorry, not enough coffee this morning already. 
not as much investing as I really wanted. This is how I started as an investor. I really wish that we would have more investing. And let's talk a little bit and go over some of the different types of properties. So this is really causing me some problems here. It's all popping up on the screen and I can't figure out where to move it because I need the whole screen. All right, so let's go to page five and talk about the different types of housing. The first one I wanna talk about, and like I said, this is my house, and this is the top view of the house. And here is one house sitting on one lot. We call this SFRD. Single family residence detached meaning it is not attached. This is all lawn. Probably 60% of you, 70% of you are watching me now from a single family residence detached living. There is this thing called single family residence. There is one lot. Now watch this. So you have got two houses on two lots, but they are attached. So in this particular case, it's single family residence, attached living. Imagine taking two houses and sliding them to the edge of the property where they share this common wall so it's single family attached living. A lot of times you will hear people call this condo and that's not necessarily true. It's a single family attached living as opposed to, here's one lot, here are two houses. That's really bad. Those are the gables on the two houses. Hopefully you can see you're staring straight down at it. Here you have two houses, but you also have two lots. Here you have two houses, but you only have one lot. This is the double that people talk about, or sometimes you hear it called a duplex. So the big key difference there is one lot with two houses as opposed to each one of these house has their own yard that has their own tax parcel number and they pay their own taxes. That would be a single family residence attached living. 